and we're live. Oh, look at there. The comments showed up. Awesome. They sure did. And see the star? Okay, cool. What's going on, everybody? Uh, how's, how's everything? So let me just check this audio really quick. So we changed systems again. Uh, I guess we will. That's what we do. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we will tell you about it in just a second. Welcome to the Thursday night live stream and all of the things that go along with that. Um, so one of the things that I wanted to tell you about is the fact that we have been trying to make little improvements to the live stream um, so that so that it can be more interactive with you because this is why we do these is to hang out with you. I love it. Uh, Matt was just talking about how, over on Texas Toast about how he likes his too. And I'm like, this is the funnest part of my week when it comes to the YouTube stuff. I actually really enjoy making the videos and I like the creativity of all of that. But to me, this is like the payoff of the week with the YouTube stuff because of the actual interaction, you know? And so making these live Q&As and Hangouts better and better and better all the time, I'm really working hard on it. So... Um, a couple of things that we did is we switched to another piece of software that now we don't have to use the iPad for the super chat noise. <laughs> so when there's a super chat, the noise is built in and it's a better noise and Leslie doesn't have to like time the button anymore. So we got that. So you'll see when somebody super chats uh, that we will make ourselves, we'll make ourselves uh, sound cooler. And then uh, the ability to have guests, of course, uh, like we did before, but I think it's going to be even better, um, and some other stuff. So I'm pretty excited. So uh, what we're going to do tonight is kind of the normal format for those of you that are new to the YouTube live stream on Thursdays. Uh, we do questions that have come in over the week on Patreon and our YouTube members. So that little join this way, right? That little join button down there on Patreon on, on YouTube uh, is a little, it's sort of like Patreon, but it's for YouTube and you don't have to join another thing. Anyway, uh, so YouTube members and Patreon members, they ask questions all week. It's the easiest way for me to get them most direct. And um, so we have a couple that we're going to share this evening. And um, yeah, so I'm super, what does that say? Oh, you got a super chat. Oh, go ahead and do it. We got a couple super chats. Wait, what do I do? You tap right, just go like this, and it'll come up on the screen. But how do you make the noise? Oh, it how do we make the, to the screen? Either. How do we make the noise? Oh my gosh, we're behind now. Oh my gosh. How many do we have? Okay, we gotta figure this out. We gotta get you guys on the screen. I thought I could. Thank y'all. So that yeah. is Dastardly Dave, Doc, Texas Toast Guitars, Mr. Goat, Brett Oh, here Johnson. we go. You Thank have to tap on there. Um, you have to tap there. Sweet. Testing it. Thank you so much, Dave. It's like a continuous test. Yeah. And we're still learning. Awesome, awesome. Let's hear it. So before, um... I had to like manually push the button and then it like, you know, it's sensitive. So now he's programmed it and it's literally yeah. just like a play button. Yep. I'm trying to get everybody out there and trying to figure so you out. you have to double. It's actually, you have to click on their, um. And click it again. Yeah. You click on their little avatar. Y'all are awesome. I'm just making sure everybody gets in there. This is so cool. For the beverage fund. You know, what's funny uh, about that, Brett. I just look how empty his poor little yeah, glass. I literally I, I had a bottle left in it the, over there. I was like, I'm gonna use the rest of this up, and there was like this much left in it. So that is perfect timing. 
we have room for one more bottle because as you know, we live in a motorhome, and so space for bottles is very limited, and therefore uh, I have to finish one before I get a new one. And it just so happens that I didn't have... I have to say hello to Carrie Ann because she's here. Oh, awesome. What's going on, Mrs. Toast? So, I'll tell you what. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna answer the Patreon questions, um, and any super chats that you pop in there too. We're also going to. There's a couple of things from the news this week. So you do have to scroll to the bottom, or it won't auto scroll. Oh. So you do it just like this. What? Whoops! Just like this. But you have to. How do you play the sound? <laughs> Awesome. Yep. And Thanks, does this Carl. actually automatically switch? It does. So we don't have to toggle them off. Beer and whiskey fund. Thank you, my friend. We have some other sounds too, but that we could get into later, I suppose. But th that one's pretty fun. So uh, the other thing I want to do is I want to chat about a couple of things in the news this week that became pretty big conversations uh, in the comments. Obviously, some Gibson stuff and some stuff with Lawler pickups. So I want to talk about that a little bit. Um, I want to talk about that uh, a little bit. And so we're going to get to that. And then the main subject tonight I, is based on a YouTube comment. And it really got me thinking. Uh, that's what the thumbnail is about making playing guitar and guitars cool again. I'm just going to give you the synopsis right now so you can be thinking about it. Guitar's gotten too nerdy. We need to make it fun. So we're going to get into that in just a few minutes. That's the subject of the night after the questions. Let's go ahead and get into some of these questions that came in from Patreon. Oh, except we have to answer another super chat again. And we have to make them a noise. <laughs> Oh, everybody, don't forget to say hi to Owen. Oh, my God, that is so awesome. And it was from Gary? Yeah, was so it was nice from Gary. Gary. Thank you, hi, Gary. Hi, Owen. Uh, yeah, Gary, uh, Owen is uh, Owen's a good good little kid. He's, he's a cool little kid. All right, let's get, um, let's get these questions going. Uh, wait, did those put those all up there? No, 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 no. It didn't. It didn't. It didn't. Oh. I, I, I know why that did. Oh, you did something wrong? Yeah, I did something wrong. Brett wants to know what like guitar novelty accessories are actually worth looking into. This is a fantastic question that I want to do a video about. I was just telling you the other novelty. day. Novelty. Like, what gimmicky kind of things? Is that what novelty means? Is gimmicky? Well, I don't know. I'll tell you what made me think of it. That guitar, because I'm doing this guitar tuner thing, mm -hmm. that one that kind of like looks like a little drill driver or something and you pluck the string and it like tunes the guitar by itself. And then the other thing I was thinking about was like robo tuners, mm -hmm. you know? Um, they get a bad rap from Gibson, but they're actually kind of cool. And I mean, I understand why they are the way they are. So um, what else? Get in the comments either in the feed over there or in the comments below the video and think about any kind of guitar gimmicky stuff. I, this is something where I might actually probably will actually use some of the Patreon proceeds to actually buy some of this stuff and try it. Um, because I think it's, I think it's worth it. I think it's something that we need to look into. This is a great question that I don't actually have an answer to, because it's more subjective, but I want to get your input on it. And then I want to do some videos on some of this funny stuff. I think it's cool. I think it, this is, it's a great question with no real answer right now, but we, we will get there. Um, Ivan wants to know, are gals meter apps for phones accurate enough to use for checking pickups? Most give a reading in UT, which I assume is micro Tesla's, um, which would actually be gals. I played with this and I do not, I didn't, I never felt confident in the consistency of the results that I was getting. Um, Ivan, you are on Patreon, so you have already seen tomorrow's video that is coming out 
where we talk about some of the tools that I use to make pickups. And in that, the link of that video, in the description of that video, there is a link on Amazon to the Gauss meter that I use. It, I think it's right about $100. And it gives me very, I've been very happy with it. Um, and it gives me, at least for what I do, designing my own stuff, um, a very consistent thing. Apps I have not had good success with. Uh, well, let me just say, I don't know if I've had good success because I can't really tell how consistent they are. So I'm not sure. But that fact in itself has made me feel uh, like I didn't want to rely on it, if that makes sense. Uh, let's okay. see. No, no worries. Uh, we'll get through these and then actually I won't need it anymore. Charles wants to know, is there a good way to hide pickups under pick guards uh, and still have good output? Fender did this uh, in the 70s, I think. And there has been some other uh, kind of attempts at it. And this is something that I'm like actively working on. I'm actively working on this. This is something I've been kind of, yeah, I think it's going to, it could be a thing. That's all I'm going to say. Could be a thing. Go ahead. And uh, well, I mean, I guess you need to learn how to drive the thing too. So I don't mean to stick my hand in there and take over. Okay. Okay. It's all yours. So yeah. So uh, it can be done. The magnet strength is the thing and the output. The problem is, is that you could just make a super high output pickup, but then that pickup doesn't sound very good. And the proximity to the strings is a limitation. The further away from the strings you get, you know, it's it's all basically it's just a geometry slash, well, it's it's all math um, that hasn't really gotten figured out yet. And I have some ideas, but I do not want to talk about them publicly because if they work, I might be the only one to ever pull it off. So far, so but I do have some ideas. I have literally in this iPad right here, written down some specs and compared some stuff of some stuff that's already existing to figure this out. I'm very curious about making it work. Very curious. So yeah, super cool. Um, let's talk real quick um, about this news stuff. And then what we're gonna do, maybe we'll go from that into some questions that you've probably saved? Um, yeah, unless you want to um, go ahead and finish a conversation because people are commenting. So. Okay, go um, ahead. Okay, so I don't like. You're learning a new feature and figuring out what you do and don't like about it. Well, it doesn't keep them in time order anymore. Oh, okay. Anyway, so you're looking at gimmicky things yeah so i don't i don't know what this stuff is oh okay oh ebo yeah an ebo is a good idea a good example of something that some people would think are gimmicky owen's dad actually speaking of owen uses an ebo um and he's really good with it and he can make really cool sounds with it i have never cared about using one of those things mm. but he's really good at it Oh, the string stretcher. Yeah. Yep. Um, this one? Um, locks, strap locks. Yeah, there are some strap locks that can be pretty gimmicky. That is for sure. This one? And what's considered a gimmick. I know, that's the thing. I don't know. That's kind of subjective. But I think if we could get a comment section going that's pretty that you know what I mean, that has a lot of this going in it. I think we could definitely come up with some cool video ideas about it. That's an extension of the question you just answered. Oh, could you compare? Oh, you know what, Ivan? I'm a moron. That is exactly what I will do. I will download a couple of apps. I will compare. Now that I have one, I will see if I can compare a few. And maybe I will do a video on that. That is a fantastic idea. 
Thank you. Awesome. We got some questions. I thought you were going to oh, talk about Oh, yeah. Something. We'll talk about this news thing first. So there's two things that happen in the news that I wanted to readdress. So, you know, we do these news things on Tuesday, right? And it's literally like a 30 second thing. We're, we're plowing through the news and we're doing a few of them. And I try to keep those videos. I don't know what I'm doing. Sorry about that. I, I, I try to keep those videos like less editorial and more just like this is what's happening in the news. And then sometimes because I don't fully explain stuff, uh, the comment section gets a little insane, especially when there's more mm, heavier subjects in there. So um, one of the things that came up this week was this whole deal with Lawler. So um, Lawler rebranded their blackface strap pickup and they changed the name to their 64. They're calling it a 64. Okay. Which makes sense because the blackface amplifier ended right about then. And so it would make sense that 64 would be the thing, right? Like the CBS sale deal. Um, but there was a lot more to their public statement than what I was able to fit in that news thing. And I thought because of the importance of this story to some people, to a lot of people, uh, I would read their whole statement that I have available because, uh, at least what I have available, um, because it was really, uh, it was really well thought out. And so I'm just going to read it. Yeah, I'm just going to read it. While many guitarists may understand the historical reference to the mid-60s Fender amps that served as the namesake for these pickups, still more are not familiar with this colloquialism and have good cause for uneasiness with the name. So, collectively, we have come to the agreement that the negative connotations associated with the term warrant this change. We will always strive to be forward-thinking and inclusive to all fans of our products worldwide, and feel as though this is more in keeping with the values that Lawler Pickups holds as a company and as individuals. We understand that this change may breed a small amount of confusion, for which we genuinely apologize, but we honestly believe that this is the right thing to do, and to that end, a little confusion is completely justifiable. It is common for people to look around and point out things that we would change about the world around us, but it takes a conscious effort to look inward to examine for areas of opportunity for growth and improvement within. After explaining and defending the meaning of the name for years, we acknowledge that doing what is right rarely requires explanation or apology, so with that, the name has been changed effective immediately. The pickups aren't changing, just the name. And it sounds like they've had to have conversations with customers for a long time about this. Mm -hmm. It's going to make their job easier and it's going to make their customers more comfortable. So the right thing is the right thing. So anyway, I just wanted to share that whole thing because that I feel that I don't want to be the source of plucking something out of a headline and having somebody misunderstand the goal of a company and then have negative conversations surrounding that. Like, right. I don't want to be the source on this channel of, oh, he picked that out of a headline and caused a huge fight in the comments or whatever. Like, I don't want to do that. So I wanted to kind of... Yeah. And press releases are put together for a reason. So to yes. acknowledge a full press release and their motivation behind it. Right. Right. Whether you agree with it or not, no interpretation I just... interpretation needed. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so that's something we didn't have room to do in the news the other day. And I thought maybe this would do them justice and any of their customers who who uh, feel strongly ab about this, it would be better if I just shared the whole thing as it was intended. So anyway, I wanted to do that. And then, of course, the other thing in the news the other day, a little less controversial, but not really, uh, is this whole Murphy Lab deal. So, you know, the Murphy Lab is those relict um, Gibson guitars. Mm -hmm. And they shipped out a bunch to dealers. I think I think it ended up being about 50 guitars that the paint fell off. And it was one color. Oh. Yeah. 
it was the backs. So when you look at like a gold top mm -hmm. or well, any of these bursts, that back is like a dark cherry, which is the co same color as my guitar. But the, the back, uh, well, probably darker than my, my guitar. Anyway, that one color is the color that was falling off after they relicked. Is the paint coming off or just like the clear finish or? So, no, the whole paint is coming off. Interesting. And the reason it's coming off is because they had a sealer issue. Hmm. They had a sealer issue. The cool part about it is Casino Guitars made a video about this. And then I saw it two or three other places and they just said, send them back, we'll replace them. No big deal. Send them back, we'll replace them. Yeah. Where it got a little controversial, I don't know why these pages aren't loading for me. Where it got a little controversial is the Gibson. Uh, this is their statement. It is especially important that our dealers and fans fully acclimate their instrument in its case when changing climates and temperatures, I would say at least five hours minimum, just like you would with a vintage 1950s instrument. They basically, their whole statement was, you took it out of the case too fast and like blamed customers and dealers. And I was like, uh, that's dumb. Like they screwed up with that. Like, why didn't they just leave it at, we're fixing it. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. So, um, or at least framed it a little differently. And again, this is another one of those situations where I don't know if the press did this because this is in an article from Guitar World. So I don't know if they just pulled, I read the whole statement and it's pretty much, that's what it says. So I don't know how you could kind of mess that up, but the good part is, is that they are fixing it. And I personally, if it was me, I would not, because this blew up into a massive deal. In a bunch of forums and a bunch of, I mean, and okay, so maybe somebody said something stupid. I would imagine they'll get a talking to about it. I mean, right? If I was that dude's boss, I was, be, I'd be like, dude, you screwed that up. I wouldn't have said it like that. However, they are fixing it, so that's really cool. And it's not the first time that this has happened. I mean, do you remember every white Chevy truck in the '80s and '90s? The paint fell off and GM didn't fix it after five years. I had a bad paint job one time. Like the paint and the clear coat interacted. So the clear coat bubbled up and was gross. Did they fix it? Or did you have to pay to fix it? Um, that, I think it was fixed. <laughs> By the time you got done, it was fixed. <laughs> See, that's the thing, but that you had to do that. though. The same thing with GM. There was a period of time where they fixed it. I remember because I was running a collision shop at this time. And there was a time period where they fixed it. And then it got to a point and they're like, we're not fixing any more of them. If the thing is, is they know what the cause of the issue is. And if they can fix it, they can fix it. No harm, no foul. You know, it's whatever. So, and I know people are going to think that I'm all Gibson fanboy because I just bought a Gibson, but I, I bought a Gibson because I, I really think that they are doing the right things right now, even though this one dude didn't really shine in the moment, <laughs> but I think everybody's trying to do the right thing. The other thing too is why do you want Gibson to fail? Or any, do you want anybody to fail? That was going to be the next words out of my mouth. Why do? Why would we want any, especially big core brand like that, to fail? We don't want them to fail. So, um, hoping for the best is probably the best thing. So it's not anything to do about like fanboyness. It's more to do about I hope they don't fail. And then the next thing people say in the comments is. Yeah, all those big guitar companies, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, what if I get big? Are you just going to, like, turn on me because <laughs> I got big? Like, turn on you. I mean, really? I always wanted, I, we talk about this a lot, though. Like, Starbucks started out as one little coffee shop. Right. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what 
where that shift happens. Apple started out as one, two guys in a garage. Right. You know, and then all of a sudden everybody thinks it's this big business that's out to like ruin you or something. And I don't, I don't, I just don't think like that. I'm like, I like Starbucks and Apple. Yeah. And I wish I owned either of them. Right. <laughs> You know, I mean, really, um, when it comes down to it. Yeah. I want to take over the world, too. What are we going to do today, Pinky? Try to take over the world. You got some more. I really want that. Just like... Not that far. No. Take over my world. Have you ever seen a dodge <laughs> neon that the paint wasn't peeling off? It's so funny. It's true. Everybody knows the story. Everybody knows the story. That was more of an EPA problem, actually. They changed the requirement of the VOC of the paint, which is how much, how many airborne solids could be present uh, during and after a paint job. So they changed the how it worked. And then they also had a water-based sealer to get the VOCs of the whole process down, and it didn't work. Hmm. And it was beyond, it was all across brands. It wasn't uh, it wasn't just one car company. So, a couple of questions. Yeah. What do we got here? Are 2015 Gibsons ruined because of robo tuners? No, man. No. They aren't. Actually, <clears throat> you know. Those robo tuners um, are actually really cool, and they work really well. Um, they, the reason they, uh, my opinion of the, all of that stuff, <clears throat> Gibson did a bunch of stuff in 2015 and 2016 that nobody liked, but it was all people that didn't. Well. This is going to get into making guitars cool again, but a bunch of keyboard warriors in 2015 and 2016 caused those problems. And Gibson mismarketed the target market of who they thought should have those products. So Gibson being a legacy brand, like you should always be able to get the original series like the original gibson like my guitar is made just like the old guitars right like nitro finish old-fashioned pots old-fashioned pickups it's made old-fashioned what they did in 2015 and 2016 is they forced everyone to have all these features that not everyone wanted if they would have put them on like, I don't know, if they would have made a series of guitars, a smaller series of guitars with modern features on it, and sold those, certain people would have bought them. But the fact that they forced everybody to buy them, I think was their mistake. Because um, Robotuners are actually really cool. And I know you're going to get in the comments right now and disagree with me, but I don't care. They are really cool. Um, I'll get caught up on my comments too. Did you get to ban somebody? No, I oh, allowed okay. it. He okay. just, um, somebody's talking about, can you pee in your yard? So somebody was like, why can't you pee in your yard? And I let it come through. I mean, whatever. You should be able to pee in your yard. Yeah. I don't get to pee in my yard because there's like, more RVs like really close. <laughs> that is a downside to RV life is I can't just go pee out my back door. But there I can go park somewhere where I can at any time. <laughs> so, you know, that's the also the upside. So, somebody might be offended by that, but whatever. I mean, everybody pees. Hopefully. Not, Unless you have a kidney attention. problem. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So I want to talk about, I want to make, I want to make guitars cool again. Did you answer that question? Oh, did we answer this question? 
is nitro lacquer really better? Um, actually, we just talked about this over. I was watching Matt talk about thick versus thin paint. Mm -hmm. um, so here's my, my short synopsis on lacquer finishes. Uh, they look cool. They age cool. But that's the only cool things about them. They suck to apply. They are not very durable. They kill you if you don't use the proper safety precautions. And they fall off. And they crack. And so, yeah, there's really nothing. There's a reason why the world moved along from lacquer finishes. Uh, going back to cars, if you owned a 1960s to 1970s GM product, the entire thing looked like the floor of a desert because it lacquer checked, just like a guitar, only a little different on a car, but it's just not a durable finish. Um, it, but people like it because it ages. Tone-wise, that's a crock. It doesn't matter. Everybody wants to talk about the wood breathing, but a clear finish on top of a guitar is still a clear finish, whether it doesn't matter what it is. And I don't know about you, but the wood in my guitars is dead, so it doesn't breathe anyway. It's just not a thing. It's just not a thing. And the people that argue it will go back to um, like a 1983 Kramer and say, yeah, well, I chipped the paint off the guitar and it was like as thick as a paper plate. It was. And for a time period, there was a loud neighbor. Um, there was paint again, because the EPA was changing rules where they had to change the solids in the air. So they put more solids on the guitar made thicker paint, blah, blah, blah. So the same time you were having thick paint on guitars, you were having paint falling off of cars because of the same reason. Now it's the 2021s and they've got paint figured out. Even on acoustic instruments, they're using very, very thin urethane finishes, very light on the wood as far as like on an acoustic guitar, it matters a lot more. But we're not talking 1985 here. Time has moved on. Technology has moved on. And the way you apply paint is different. And it's not an issue anymore. It's not an issue anymore. Absolutely not. That, oh, we have some more? Oh, no, okay, cool. That is a great segue because that's a very nerdy question that I love. That is that kind of a question. And I think it's awesome. Because that is a lot of the time that we spend talking about guitar stuff is talking about that stuff. I'm going to show you a comment that came in. And this is not to bash this guy. I, I have given his comment a lot of thought. And I really I appreciate the fact that he, he shared it. I'm going to put this on the screen. This came in this week. He said, Hi Dylan, if the sound of an electric guitar isn't about the wood or the shape of the guitar, but the pickup only, why did Gibson Les Pauls go to all that trouble of shaping the guitar the way they do and using the wood they use? Have I missed something? So we don't need to get into a conversation about tone wood or any of that kind of stuff. That's the whole point. The, re the way I replied here, I'm going to throw that back up there for a second. The way I replied to him was because they're cool. Gibson was coming up with a guitar that they wanted it to be fancier and cooler than a Telecaster. And a Les Paul is fancier and cooler than a Telecaster in that way, in the way that it's an arch top, fancier, it's got more stuff on it, it's got binding, it's, you know, we just did this video about it, right? Like, we just did this whole video about why Les Pauls are more expensive than um, Telecasters. So, and this question got me thinking. Because the reason this question is important is because the answer is because it's cool and because it's fun and because it's awesome. And that is what we are getting further and further away from, 
I believe in 2021 is playing guitar or talking about guitar stuff for the right reasons. Why do you play guitar? Why do you make the choices that you make? Is it because you are inspired by a band that you listen to or when you were a kid or last week? Is it because you want to be creative or did you buy a piece of gear because somebody in a forum on the internet told you what to think? That is the thing. And it takes away from the fun of it. The other question that came in today that made me think of this was people are all over my case to do an AB test of my P90 versus Gibson's P90 in my SG. I don't want to do it. And I'll tell you why. <clears throat> I think AB tests are stupid. I've said it many times. And the reason is, is because, okay, so I said that to this guy. I said, we're going to talk about this. I didn't say it was stupid. I said, we're going to talk about this tonight. And he said, I'd like to know your take on it because that's how most of us make decisions on what pickups to buy. Hmm. My question is, if you hear a new pickup, why do you have to hear the old pickup? Like, if you see a thing that you like, how it looks, how it sounds, unless you're matching paint, why do you need an A-B test? Unless they just need a frame of reference, maybe? The problem is, is that I may not, or most of the time, do not have the proper frame of reference for them. And I can't control what... But the... isn't a frame of reference relative also? Well, that's what I'm saying. I, I can't control the A. Right. So I can only control the B. Right. And the... you either like the B or you don't. Exactly my point. Okay. So, I make humbuckers. We don't talk about this ahead of time, y'all. No. Sometimes this... I might be walking into the lion's den. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I make humbuckers. For example, we'll use humbuckers as a better example. And people say, can you do an A-B test? No, <laughs> because I don't know what humbuckers you have. Right. And it is physically impossible for me to have the guitar that you have with the scale length that you have and the amp that you have and the pedals that you have and play the way you do. You know what's funny? All of those things. So for all of you that just came from Texas Toast live stream, it's the same thing. He's like, ask your cues, and if you don't like our A's, you can go somewhere else. <laughs> and now we're saying you either like our B's or go back to your A's. We don't know what your A's are. Uh, and that is my point. That is my point. Like, Serendipity. all I can do is give you... And oftentimes when I play a, a guitar on a, on a demo and I share with you what the pickup is supposed to do, typically it is not, it cannot be compared. I really like this interface, y'all, by the way. If you like the sound of the guitar better with your pickup in it, then who cares about the original sound? That's what I'm saying. I have a really hard time. Oh, and you can just do that. That's good, because I lost it over here, so. Yeah, 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 I like that. We're really, we are learning tonight. Um, I don't know that my mic is too low, Ivan. I talk way lower than him, naturally. It's hard to balance us. You are lower. Even with different mics. Yeah, we could probably click you up one level, but we won't worry about it. Anyway, uh, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate the super yes, chat. Yes, thanks, Doc. Um... But this, this is exactly what I'm getting at, is I don't have control over the A. I don't. 
I only have control over the B and 90% of the time a guitar player is searching for something they do not have. So why do I care what they have? Now, the caveat to this is sometimes when they're searching for something they don't have, they're trying to solve a problem. I get emails all the time. It's like, I got one the other day and it was like, I am so frustrated because every humbucker I try does this, 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 and this. Does your guitar, does your particular model of humbucker that he was shopping for, does it do that? And I'm like, that might not be the right one for you understanding what you're trying to do. Try this one instead. Right? Mm -hmm. It's helpful to know what you have, but I don't. That sounds fun. What that is does that? sound. That's a motorbike. It, I don't need to, we don't need to do an AB test for that. AB test is not needed. It's not needed at all. Now, there are a couple times, there are a couple things where, let's say we're doing, A-B tests are, are helpful. Oh, what should we do for a new member sound? Uh, let's use um, the bicycle horn. Oh, sorry. Again, an applause. Or an applause. Welcome, Doug. Yes, thank you. Oh, now I have to figure out how to cut it off. Boom. Now, there are times where an A-B test, when you're trying to do a comparison to show a difference between things. So like, for example, when we do, um, when I'm trying to show you the benefits of a particular cable, like a cheap cable versus an expensive cable, and you like put on headphones and you're like, can I tell the difference? Nope, I can't tell the difference. Okay, then don't buy the expensive cable because you're wasting your money. Right. The person next to you might have different ears and listen to it and be like, Oh, okay. Yeah, I can tell the difference. Okay, then it might be worth it to you to spend more money for that cable. That makes sense. But to hear, I, I think of, I, I always think about pickups, sounds, pedals as flavors, right? Like, you know, Lawler makes a different flavor than I make. And that's why I tell you to go buy his wide range pickups because I don't make that flavor. Uh, you know, if you don't like too much high end and crispiness, then go buy Porter Telly pickups instead of mine. Because there is underlying characteristics to the brand that are always present. Still, no A-B test necessary. So anyway, it's this sort of nerdism that I think is taking the fun out of guitar playing. Because if you're inspired to do something, to play something, to make a sound, uh, to explore a sound, to make a sound you've never made before, that's really cool. But to gear hunt based on data is sort of counterproductive to creativity. That is my opinion. I mean, it goes both ways because, like, a lot of this stuff is science. Like, we, the way the guitar works is science. So we can show data to show the way it works is the way it works. But then there is a relative side of it. That's what's so weird about guitar stuff is, like, science makes the thing work. But then how you interact with that science is super relative. And now science doesn't matter at all. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, but we should lean more on that. You know, I just think it would be a lot more fun. So, yeah, we got some comments. What are people saying? Yeah, so Ed DePriest says, I really want to try your P90s. Do you have any demos of your pickups? All of our pickups have demos at DylanTalkStone.com. Uh, it's funny you should mention the P90 thing because the P90 thing will be in my SG. Uh, I'm shooting that video. I'm in the process of shooting that video. It'll come out probably the end of next week. I'm not really sure. It might be the week after that. Um, the The only downside to the Les Paul Jr. style with the Dog Ear P90 in it is there's no neck pickup to because my my P90 in the neck position is unrivaled 
in the business, period. We make the best one. In the bridge position, it solves some Gibson problems that we're going to get into the video. The one thing I didn't like about my Gibson P90 is that there was a brittleness and a crackle to it that I did not like. And mine, while still retaining all of the nice clarity on the high end, was a lot... I hate the word warm. Um, it was just smoother like it, it just it, it's not as i don't know there's this weird annoying crackle that i couldn't get rid of with the gibson one and it was just really brittle kind of sounding on the top and that is gone that is gone but to really appreciate it you got to put two of these two p90s in a guitar like a telly or a les paul special or something and you will be in love um uh oh, new member. What do you want the sound to be this? Yeah, time? sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that name. John on eight can't play any variety. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah, we um we actually we've actually seen him before. Uh there should be there is a new video up there for you. Um oh, there's also a setting here. I think we can make it to where it goes away by itself after so many seconds. But I, we have oh. to fix, we have to do it, and I don't know how to do it right now. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. What's everybody else saying? So, I have a couple more questions. Um, okay. One, so Windsurf Maui is here a lot, um, and they said, please remember, when you bought the guitar, you said it would sound better with your pickup. I thought the Gibson P90 sounded killer, so I wanted to hear the AB so I could decide if I agreed. Fair point. Fair point. I'll do it. He's the one that asked me today. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. You know what, Windsurf Maui? Because you ask nice, I'll do it. No, and I'm joking. You're right. Because in that case, it is a known quantity, right? Like, if, I, if you went and bought that guitar, would you replace the pickup with my pickup? That's a great question. In that, I get that. I get that a lot. That makes sense. Hmm. That makes makes total sense. I still don't get it because if you like the pickup, why would you want to change it? You don't have to. Nothing no, says you have to. Upgrade. It's possible that he might think twice about. Okay, so maybe let's you go don't down. Know what you don't know. Yeah. Don't know. Okay. There's that. Because if you haven't heard it. Yeah. I don't know. But it's still a B thing. If you have the guitar, you already know what the A is. Right. But it is, to be fair, it is hard to reference. But then somebody doesn't play like you. Or somebody could That's get a totally thing, different sound man. that you don't even, you can't demonstrate. That is Because it's the not how you play. Thing. I play through a Marshall with EL84s in it, which is not very common. I mean, I am not a musician. But when you're in a room and there's multiple people playing, I know every time you're playing. Yes. Yes. Period. There was actually a thing in Guitar World magazine today where John Mayer was somewhere and he picked up an Epiphone Les Paul and played it through a PV and everybody was like, he sounds exactly like John Mayer. Right. Yeah. I, yes. And what I would say, Windsurf Maui, is if you like what you have, then don't buy my pickup. Yeah. We don't want anybody to not be satisfied either. No. <laughs> and I don't. If you are happy, that's the other thing. If you're happy with what you have, then don't change it. Uh, and this goes back to the original point of making guitars fun again. Why are we searching for stuff that we don't need? I don't mean that we don't need, but like, if I like what I like, I'm not on the internet shopping all the yeah. time for the next thing just don't because. Don't FOMO for something you didn't even need or want. Exactly. Um, I just realized something that I didn't know. Okay. Because Doug is excited. His name is now Green because the Patreon never worked. So now he's a YouTube member and he's in Green. Awesome. I did not know the Dangerous Brothers. 
or Dave and Doug? It's Dave and Doug. I did not know that. Yes. I've been listening to Matt talk about that, and I did not no, realize. I knew it was Dave and Doug. So I just learned something today, yeah. guys. Now, obviously, this is a conversation that we're having. I'm not saying that I'm right or wrong about it, and I am obviously flexible. I will do an A-B test with that guitar. Just so you know, <laughs> I recorded a before, <laughs> before I switched to pick up out today. So you did all that talk, and you already did this? I was trying to decide if I was going to use any of it. I wasn't going to. Interesting. But now I, you are. I recorded it because everybody asked about it. And then, and then I was like, no, this is so stupid. But out of respect for Windsurf Maui, and I really do respect what he just said. It makes well, sense. Well, and I like that. You know, I, I don't want to disrespect anybody, but I just, I'm just sharing my opinion. Yeah. That doesn't mean, opinions aren't all correct. You know what I mean? Um, and not all our opinions are valid and I don't mind, I don't mind chatting about it. That's why I wanted to have that conversation. Um, cause there are situations where it does warrant it. Um, but with the caveat that it doesn't mean anything is bad. No. You might still like the A and that's okay. Yeah. And I don't care. Yeah, I, I will. Think that's the part is, I mean, we've had this conversation before, right? You can like one or the other and it doesn't mean the other is bad. I don't know. So that's the other thing that takes the fun out of the guitar world. Yes. All the things are good. Everything is good. There is nothing bad except for Colos. Is that just going to be a thing now? Probably. There's like, nothing. Tool is being. If it has I mean, not they been came out with an album, so I guess you can't say that. Yeah, anymore, Tool but... finally came out with an album, so we can't joke about that yeah, anymore. But is that going to be the thing? Maybe they're going to be amazing one day. And Harley Benton came out with some more stuff this week, you know, keeping it fresh. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I just think it's uh, there's nothing bad, and and I think the what happens is. People are like, is that gear good for me? No, then it must be bad. But it's not. A Line 6 Spider 5. I always go back to a Line 6 Spider amp. They're terrible. But they're not. Because a guy with an Affinity Telecaster who is, or a gal who is 7 years old or 8 years old or 12 years old or whatever, plays through a Line 6 Spider 5 and an Affinity Telecaster. And he can turn... Uh, welcome, uh, Vinny's World. Um, he can make a bunch of sounds for $105 that I couldn't make when I was a kid. Do you know... I'll tell you a story. So, in the mid-early 80s, in the early... Uh, really early 80s, like really early 80s, like police synchronicity early 80s. I just made a police shirt. Did you? So they've been on my mind. I remember, oh, you did. <laughs> I remember hearing early Van Halen stuff and thinking, that is the sound I want to make. This is before I discovered... Stevie Ray Vaughan, and he became my like number one influence, right? And I remember hearing Eddie Van Halen, and I remember thinking, this is what I want to sound like when I grow up. I actually wrote a song when I was very little called Rollover Van Halen. And I don't even remember how to play it now, but it was the first like little riff that I came up with on the guitar. And I tried so hard to sound like him and my amp I, I played a Stratocaster the Strat that I still own and a PV Studio Pro 40 solid state amp that there was no possible way that I was ever going to sound like Eddie Van Halen because it was never going to get I couldn't figure out how to get overdrive like I, it was it was this little solid state amp that was just nothing but clean. I couldn't figure out how to get a good overdrive no matter what I tried. It was all scratchy and gross. Like I couldn't do it. This is as, as a 
a young person. I could not make those sounds, and I was very discouraged by that. And I literally gave up. In 2021, if that was me, I would not have to do that. I would not have to give up. I could have a Strat. I could have a Line 6 Spider 5. I could turn it over there to that shreddy section, and I could sound exactly like Eddie Van Halen in my own head. That's why there's no such thing as bad gear. Right. I don't want a Spider 5 and an Affinity Telly because I don't need, I don't, I'm somewhere else in how I play. But somebody needs that. So it's not bad gear. The Metal Zone is not a bad pedal. The Robo Tuners on an LS Paul are not a bad. I know lots of people that bought those and are very thankful for them because they tune their guitar for them and they don't have to worry about it. Mm -hmm. I know I have a good friend who is a professional musician who plays probably five nights a week, who has an SG that did not have robo tuners and he bought them and put them on there because he can do alternative tunings. He can do, he can switch tunings within a song, like in the middle of a song, he'll do like a loop on his looper and then change tunings. And then, I mean, it's all a bunch of tools, and if you don't need that tool, that doesn't make it bad. I don't need a jackhammer. That doesn't make me think they're stupid, or it doesn't tell. It doesn't make me tell somebody you shouldn't buy a jackhammer because I think they're stupid. I just don't need one. So th that's my whole thing about all these these few questions that came in this week. Got really got me thinking about like. To bring it back around to the positive, what inspires you to play? Because this is the other thing that we we talked about the other day, is that I kind of stopped listening to music. Mm -hmm. And it's not because there's no good music, because there's tons of good music to listen to. It's because I got too wrapped up with work and all this nerdy stuff. And so I've literally been doing, I've been doing something almost every day lately I've been trying to find some new music and I've been going back and listening to an old record every day while I'm working to get myself out of this like nerd obsession with what we all do here like let's go back to playing music listening to music and it's already making me play different in like three days, three or four days ago, I started doing that. Yeah. You want to do some questions? Let's do it. Um, Joe Quixotic. It makes me think of Joe Exotic every time I see it. I don't Heck know yeah. if that's why it's your name or not, but anyway. Do you have an Carol intelligent Baskin. design pickup? I don't know what that means. What does an intelligent design pickup mean? I mean, is that a brand that's in capital letters? I don't know. Oh, all right. Maybe we need some more information. Yeah, clarify that for that. me if you would. Uh... Benjamin Guitars, he said you already answered his question because um, he said what artists or brands had a sound that made you go chasing after it and make your own pickups. And I do think that is the conversation we just had. Yeah, uh, to make my own pickups, um, it was not... It did not make me make my own pickups. Um, my The pickup thing came from problem solving. I'll tell you the pickup that started it for me was the center punch. Because I had, I'll tell you what I had. I mentioned it briefly in the news this week. I had a 70s Ibanez artist double cut. It was like a double cut Les Paul. And it had... Um, Seymour Duncan 59s in it. This was a long time ago. This is probably 20 years ago I had this guitar. And it had coil splits on it, and they were terrible. And then I had another guitar more recently, like an Aria Pro 2 maybe, and then I had something else. I had a couple other guitars with coil splits, and they were terrible. And I was like, I want to solve that problem. So that is the first pickup that really did it for me. And then... I started, and then I started looking at Tele stuff. I'm like, no, it was Strat stuff. It was, then it was Strat stuff. Then the Strat thing was inspired by 
Stevie Ray. I wanted it to sound like a Stevie Ray guitar. And I've just recently revisited the whole Stevie Ray thing and made it even better. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just constantly doing that now for sure. Um, I guess we won't get clarification. Joe just said he's got to go. Okay. Um, Brett Johnson says, which do you prefer making guitar or bass pickups? Um, I don't care really. I would make either one. They wind the same. We use almost this, all the same parts. Um, I don't do that many bass pickups. We probably sell two sets of bass pickups every 90 days. And it could just be your content, right? You've talked yeah. way more about guitars than yeah. bass. Yeah, and so I don't... A lot of people don't even realize you make bass pickups a lot of times. So I have a plan to up my bass game. Um, there's a friend of mine in Nashville that plays bass and makes content. And I'm... I haven't talked to him about it directly, but we've talked a little bit about it, and I think... I may send him some stuff if he'll just make some little five minute demos for the website. So at least a real bass player can play the stuff. So I, I'm we're I'd like to up that a little bit so that people know that we do it because, mm -hmm. you know, it, I, yeah, we make really good jazz bass pickups and make really good P bass pickups. But um, and. I would like to make a Music Man pickup. It's just trying to figure out the tooling for it. But I just recently met somebody who can help me with that. So hmm. that may happen. That may happen. Awesome. Um, George Anderson. Um, I'm currently using an Affinity Strat with an American Joyo pedal. Oh, cool. And it has helped me to learn to play the blues. So we were just talking about gear and different yeah. ideas. So I just thought it was cool. He was talking about he was inspired what sounds like to be a different genre with of music. Two pieces, with two pieces of equipment that can be bought on Amazon. That's cool, yeah. That is exactly what I'm talking about. And another person made down the street may say, why would you play that piece of junk or whatever? But it's it's not because it's inspiring you to play. It's doing exactly. And you'll... It, Here's what I'll tell you about that. If I don't know if that's your first guitar or not, but if that's the the one that's like really influencing you to play, don't ever sell that. Keep that one. I have my first electric guitar and I have my first acoustic guitar. I'll never sell them. Keep those two instruments, your first acoustic and your first electric, if you haven't already sold them. Um, in that affinity and that pedal, keep them because. It's just something that'll remind you. I, it still, to me, to this day, it still does. And I don't even carry those with me anymore. Those are actually in a closet at her mom's house because we don't carry them in the motorhome anymore. But I, I'll never sell those. Make sure you keep those. Robert Tucker says, do you make anything comparable to a super distortion? Yeah, our 8-ball. Our 8-ball is is right there yep that's a really good pickup I actually have to make one of those next week Jason Albert said Dylan what about glary guitars I saw your reviews about them on an old <laughs> video yeah glary guitars don't work good underwater so I think I wouldn't buy one <laughs> all right um so dude HJD says I hear your point but it is critical to reference that the guy who is making the pickups changed them to his own. An A-B comparison between the pickups is a testament to standing by your product. And I'm not sure if that's positive or negative. Because um, it sounds like two opposing statements. But it is important to know that mm -hmm. a B test from us is a product created. But I also think, I will say personally, that Dylan is terrible about promoting his own products. <laughs> so, um, yes, except for that one. Yeah, it is. Uh, but he also does stand behind his product. Yeah. But we want you to buy it 
if you want it and it's what you need or yeah I yeah don't know. um you're gonna hear plenty of p90 because that's the only electric guitar that i have right now and it's his favorite and it's my favorite i you know we made all those videos and talking about gibson problems and stuff and the reason I bought that guitar is because I felt so positive despite the problems. And everybody got in the comments and like, you wasted your money. This is a person like just trying to justify the fact that he spent that much money. And I'm like, no, you guys don't get it. This is like a dream guitar for me. I love this guitar. And I, it's really, I'm, man, I love it. I do. I'll probably get it out and play it tomorrow some more. Like I, I love it. I have to do a podcast with somebody tomorrow, but I really, really love that guitar. Really love it. Mr. Goat says, I inherited some humbucker pickups that have paint on the under their side. What is the safest way to remove paint? Is it ruined? On the underside? That's what it says. Uh, I, I wouldn't mess with them too much. I wouldn't worry about it. It's not hurting anything. Um... You know, I, yeah, I, I wouldn't, don't use steel wool because the shards and stuff from the steel wool will go inside and mess up the windings. I've had that problem a lot, or I've fixed that problem for people before. Um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't, excuse me, we get that question a lot. Like, how do I get stuff off my pickups in it? Can't see it. Yeah, if, especially if you can't see it. I wouldn't worry about it. I wouldn't mess with it. All right, you want more questions? Sure, let's go. Mm, John Own 8 can't play any Roddy who's new member tonight asks thoughts about the Line 6 DT50 112 amplifier. Tempted to own the quote dream rig. No one talks about them. Line 6 DT50. Hang on one second. I've just been looking at Line 6 stuff today um, because. Will, my, one of my buddies, Will, just texted me and he was like, have you heard anything about a new uh, Helix coming out? Because he's like wearing his out. Like he gigs it every day. He's like, some switches are going bad and stuff. Um, I don't know about this amp. That's the answer. All right. I'll have to put it for another topic sometime. Yeah, I don't know about this amp. Because it, it says it's a modeling amp. It's not available anymore. Oh. It looks cool, but I don't know anything about it, to tell you the truth. Um, I don't know. I'm actually, sh I'm actually shopping for another modeler right now. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Having a big amp, I love having this Marshall, but it's just... Not practical for our lifestyle. And I'm, I love it. And I bought it so that we could make videos with it and stuff. And it has been working out. And I really love it with the Gibson. So I may put up with it for a little while longer. Um, if somebody offered me some money for it, I'd, I'd probably sell it. But I don't know what I would get. I'm, I'm reluctant to buy another Kemper. I, I really... That's my first go-to, is to, to buy another Kemper. But Kempers are so long in the tooth now that I don't want to spend 1700 bucks on a Kemper and then have them come out with something six months later and then be mm -hmm. stuck. You know what I mean? They've been out for so... I don't know, man. Like, I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to... And that Quad Cortex thing is the same money, but everybody that plays one that I know, all my friends that have them, are all super metal guys. and they, All the metal guys really like them. So I, I'm still, I'm just, I don't know. I'm waiting. Matthew Murray, do you feel that innovation is stifled within guitars and their electronics? Absolutely. And that goes again back to guitar players allowing themselves to be inspired by stuff that sounds good, no matter what it's made of and no matter what, technology is in it um, it doesn't have to have braided wire it doesn't have to be made out of antiquated junk from the 60s and 50s uh, that being said i just bought a guitar that does that so i mean i like that stuff too 
Um, I really, really love vintage guitars, and I really love all of that stuff. But I also think there is a place for learning. If you, if you, what is there? Some I forget what famous person said it, but if you lean on nostalgia, you get left behind. And I think guitar players really, really, really do that. Um, and I believe that technology is getting to the point where we're going to, we're going to, at some point very soon, if not already, the technology is going to be there that we're going to be able to make a thing do whatever we want it to do. It doesn't matter what it is. Like we can make a Princeton reverb with no tubes in it. That sounds exactly like a Princeton Reverb. The technology exists to do it. Will your head allow you to play that? Will your brain fool you because you're so stuck on having tubes? Probably. Yes. Um, yeah. A lot that will happen to a lot of people. But there will be a time, if it's not here already, very soon. That technology will be in a spot where if I say I want this sound, you're going to be able to just like go like this and it's going to make it. I mean, it's it's just the way the world is. And I hope it happens. I hope literally. OK, so I just held up my iPad Pro. I'm a person who says because I live in a motorhome and we are not there yet, but I hope in two to five years that I'll just go like this. And this is my guitar in it. You know what I mean? Like, I want that. I don't want to be hauling around stuff. But it's got to be good. <laughs> they don't have an iPad that does it quite yet. They don't have an app that does that quite yet. But it will be there very soon. Um, I also learned something else tonight. Yeah? Oh, we're listening to Texas Toast. Um, so, Jeffrey Egan was talking about needing a p90 guitar oh yeah and then there's chat 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 and um and they're letting them know that you make um this the single coil size p90 mm -hmm. but then he says i've been thinking about getting a jazz master with p90s and i was like i just heard that i feel like and so dave is the one that's building that in may yes i did not know that mm -hmm. so you knew that okay. yeah anyway. well because so for those of you that are not familiar, I know a lot of you came over from Texas Toast, so you already know, but in May, we are going to take the motorhome out to Denver for an entire month, and Matt at Texas Toast Guitars is doing a series of classes where you're going to be able to build your own guitar in a week. And what we're doing is you buy that class from him, but you can also go to the website and buy a pickup winding class where we teach you how to wind your own pickups. One of them's already sold out, but there's two other ones that are still full, that are still open. <laughs> the idea would be is that you come out on the weekend, you learn to make pickups, you literally make your own pickups. Then that following week, you would be in that class building a guitar and put your own pickups that you made in your own guitar and you would have start to finish the entire thing. And you could do an A-B test at the end if you wanted to. I feel like Dave is going to be so good. He's going to be like your assistant by the time he comes in May. Dave is going to be, well, and Dave is a Patreon member and he, it, man. and he comes over to our, um, live hangouts. Yeah. And we've been talking about all kinds of stuff over there. Yeah. So yeah, no, anyway, that's, that's super awesome. Cool. All right. So then we had, I feel like that's all. Oh, um, clarification on the, amp thing that you didn't know about yes so john own eight can't play any roddy says they build the line six variax plus the line six pod hd plus the bogner design line six dt amps as the dream rigs because you could replicate so many tones with all of the modeling capability yeah and to tell you the truth um isn't that what all modelers are? i would just buy a line six helix at this point the line six helix is the left is the culmination of all of that and it's this big and it's amazing 
I had the miniature version of it and I never really bonded with it because I was really spoiled by the Kemper and I kind of just, I probably didn't give it enough time. In fact, I know I didn't give it enough time. I probably should just sell that and buy another Helix HX stomp, but I don't know. We'll see. But yes, their stuff is really good. Their modeling stuff is really good. Awesome. Anything else? Nope. Now they're just talking about, I mean, Ivan says he wished he could afford the time to go. Brett says same here. Yeah, it would be so cool to be able to meet everybody all at once. I know. Because I, this stuff is going to be on the weekend, I get to be there too. That's right. Yep. Usually uh, busy during the week, but. I really wish that there was a way that we could have some sort of meetup for all these dudes. Because everybody, I mean, look at all these We're people. We're going to have man. a meetup at Texas Coast of Cars in May. <laughs> yes, we are. No, that is true. You're right. Yeah, it just blows my mind, man, that everybody watches Carl every says, week. And... XFX, or are they worth the money? XFX. I do not have experience with them myself. But I have a bunch of friends that use them mm -hmm. professionally, and they love them. Um, if they make, well, they do make, they make like a thousand dollar version, and that is actually kind of on my radar, because I was working on a project with another musician recently, and he had Axe Effects, and I was telling him, I was like, well, if you have one, well, then I should get one. And then that way, when we're A-B testing stuff, mm -hmm. um, not necessarily A-B testing, but <laughs> when he's testing, I'm designing stuff. So I'm designing stuff. He's deciding if he likes it, right? And so if he had an Axe FX, I had an Axe FX, it would be super easy to be able to reference that stuff. Um, so I've been actually thinking about buying an Axe FX. And everybody I know that uses them loves them loves them i think it's kind of ford versus chevy on the axe effects versus camper kind of deal it's six and one half dozen the other you know um i think it depends on how nerdy you want to get i think if you really want to break down like the structure of your rigs and stuff i think the axe effects goes deeper however kemper just came out with an ipad app that um does a lot of that stuff too so I think things are kind of all evening out, if that makes sense. Um, Carl says we need a Sturgis for guitar geeks. It's so funny since Sturgis is going on. Well, right it's now. called Summer Nam, but it's it's kind of a bust this year. It was, but kind of... that, it's not though. I guess it, there is a public day normally. You think they'll bring back the public day? I don't know. I I want maybe what we need to do is. I mean, we need to go to like Sweetwater Gear Fest or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because they, they canceled that. Well, they didn't cancel it. They did it all virtual this year. But maybe next time they do Sweetwater Gear Fest. That's like in Illinois or Indiana, right? Um, we could go to that and just tell everybody we're going to be there. Mm. Um, and maybe even get a table or something. And just so that everybody knows where we are. or Or work it out so that everybody knows where we are. And maybe do, that's probably what we should do, is pick an event on the east side of the country and maybe a, an event on the west side of the country to make it easier for everybody and try to meet up with as many people as possible. Because it's getting there. I I mean, I don't ever want to be like, oh, we have so many fans, we need to, it's, that's not what it's about. It's just, I'm literally like, we're meeting people and yeah, but creating relationships. Yeah, but my favorite is, spontaneous coffee shops that we just did oh like, yeah that was really nice yeah so we had a patreon patron um who rob dave says gear fest was fun yeah dave would go to gear fest because he's on the other side of ohio um so rob is a patreon patron and i don't know when we were in nashville he was like he was like hey, I'm going to be in Nashville, but we were going to be there opposite weeks. But we were only an hour and a half away. So we met up in some random little town, in some random little coffee shop, and I got to meet him in person, which was really, really cool. Yep. He was super cool. Um, 
we got to meet some other people too. So I love that. Yes. That's why I like Thursdays. Yes. I love this. This is so fun. Um, what was I going to tell you something else too? But I forgot. Oh, well, that's it. Okay. Um, awesome. Kevin Moore says, ever considered the artists that played the old stuff were all using the latest and greatest of the time. Sometimes new can have improvement. Example, tuning stability. Yes. Yeah. You know, there's a couple, I want to do a video about that. Um, it's, it, I want to do it with Clifton though. So I have a friend who is a recording engineer hmm. and he is, he has a 48 channel Neve console and he's very good. And his ear is very, very good. And I have this idea for a video because him and I have listened to some pickups before together and I was listening to him play and I made these pickups and I was like, I didn't even know they could sound like that. And when I was envisioning what they were going to sound like, I was listening to it as I heard it on a record. And when I heard it in person, it was different. And then I actually had to go and make changes. So what I'm getting at is if you listen to your favorite artist on a record, that is not what the guitar actually sounds like because recording processes, preamps, analog boards, the way it was originally recorded, none of that stuff can be duplicated. So if you listen to an old Led Zeppelin song, <laughs> yes, Boris. <laughs> Cell bandwidth. Oh, he always buys us cell bandwidth. That's what it's for. It's expensive. I, I know. He he's he's said it in the comments before. I don't know how you guys do this just with cell. It must cost a fortune. Yes, it yes, does. Yes, it does. It does cost a fortune, but it's worth it. But that's another thing that I think people think about. All this tone chasing and nerdery, and the guitar doesn't even sound like that. I got really blasted a couple weeks ago for saying that I don't like the way a 59 Les Paul sounds, because I don't. What you hear on a record is not how a 59 Les Paul sounds. They don't sound that great. They're really raspy sounding. They're really jangly and bright. They don't sound like ACDC. They are very, almost single coil sounding. Um, and that guitar was just a guitar. There's nothing special about it. Everybody thinks they're amazing because they're 300,000 bucks. That's because it's rare, not because it's good. <laughs> And they can be good. I mean, I've played, mm, played a half a dozen, maybe more, of that era. You know, fifty-eight to sixty-one. Um, and I played a couple good ones, but I played a couple that were like logs with strings on them too. So you know, I mean, but everybody around me was like, ooh ah ooh ah, and I'm like, it's a big fat neck on a really heavy guitar with. It's not that great. So, yes, they played what they had at the time. That's all. Nothing really special. I hate, People hate it when I say that, but it's, it's um, really true. So, somebody was saying um, GearFest 2022. It looks like the website says June of 2022. 2022, yes. But the dates are not confirmed. But I will say, getting us from Denver, when we will be there the month of May, to Indiana in <clears> June, <throat> depending on when those dates are, might be impossible. Yeah, because if it's the first weekend of June, there's no way we can do it, because we would be in Denver. Yeah. Um, yeah, that would be tough. But we'll have to pay attention to that. We will pay attention to it, because I would love for that to work. Mm-hmm very much um i don't know so windsurf maui says i'm sorry did i miss it is the build your own pickups build your own guitar class the project you were working on a few weeks ago um that is one of them 
that is one of the projects that I'm working on, yes. I have more. Yeah. So if you're asking, I saw somebody else ask, did you ever make an announcement? No. No. We have not. We have not. <laughs> no. I think... And we're also no longer talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. But... And what I will say about maybe it... Maybe more to come. Let me just say one thing. Lots of stuff takes a lot longer than you think. Yeah. To... Than we thought, too. Yeah. It ain't over. Yes. I'm just not going to... I don't want to get anybody's hopes up prematurely and then disappoint people and stuff. Like so, ours. We don't want to get our hopes up. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> we're literally just like letting that lay for a second. Yes. And letting some time pass. Let everybody... Let the machine do what the machine needs to do. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to tell you something at some point in the future. But I kind of just laid off of that because of that. Honestly, my hopes too. Like I just kind of want to just, it's not just me. Like it's a lot of big things that have yeah. to happen and that I'm not in control of. <laughs> and it's not, um, I mean, while we're talking about it, cause this feels uncomfortable to talk about, but that's okay. Sometimes you have to talk about uncomfortable things, but, um, we were really that excited about it. Yes. It was not, I still am to hype anybody up. Um, <sighs> But it's just not something we can talk about. And we're, it was literally a conscious decision. Like, no, we're going to focus on what we can control no. and what we can talk about and, um, and just keep going. Yep. And hopefully at some point in the future, I'll be able to tell you more. Um, I hope. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I want to focus and and I think part of the thing too was I really wanted to focus on this. Um, when we are here, I wanted to focus on this stuff and making friends with everybody and making really great pickups. We are really busy right now, you guys. Oh, Dave says it's the end of June. He said June 24th, 25th. That, that could, that could work. Yeah. That could work. That, that could actually work. Um, Oh, and Benjamin Guitars, I'm probably jumping ahead of you, but Benjamin Guitars wants to know if I'm still making the carbon fiber guitar. We are. I just talked to Matt about that yesterday. Um, yes. And it is going to be awesome. Yep. So there's still things in the works. Yep. Yep. Um, and we're really busy. Uh, we're shipping pickups every day right now. I mean, it's... I mean, I always ship pickups every day, but I mean, it feels like, especially right now, um, it's one thing right after the other. And I'm literally having to, I don't want to say, say no to things, but I am literally like having to give my days a lot of thought, like from this hour to this hour, I'm going to be working on a video. From this hour to this hour, I'm going to be winding pickups. From this hour to this hour, I'm going to be shipping stuff. From this hour to this hour, I'm going to be shooting another video. Tomorrow, I have to spend from here to here doing another podcast for somebody else. Like, we are literally, it's crazy right now, which is so much fun, which is what I want to focus on because it's what I'm really happy doing. So I'm glad that it's, I'm glad that it's going well. Would wax potting a single coil make a difference? Um, it doesn't really affect the sound that much, but it will keep you from having trouble with feedback and stuff. Um, yeah. And it depends on how heavy you wax pot and what you use, but we, we don't, our stuff's not really super heavily wax potted. Um, it's kind of a dip and go sort of thing. We don't use vacuum or any of that because... I have some theories about that, so that's just kind of how I do it. Yeah. Um, what do you think extending the width of pickups would do, such as doubling the width and magnet size? Good idea? Yes or no? So, um, when you widen a coil, it completely changes the tone. Um, an example of this would be a pre-51P51 
and a Jazzmaster pickup are almost exactly the same, but a Jazz, same wine count and everything, but a Jazzmaster pickup is flatter and fatter because it's only an eighth of an inch tall and it squeezes the same wine count out way wide. And a early P90 before they started putting screws in them with two humbucker magnets were constructed the same way and it was thicker and closer together. And it's a massively different sound. And then when you change the width of magnets, that changes the center dimension of the core and that completely changes the sound. Those are big, big factors. I would say more than any other thing, dimension of the coil is the number one thing that changes the sound of a pickup. More than wind count. You can wind, you can, I could wind a pickup for you that was 550 wines, 1,000 wines different, and you might not be able to tell the difference. If I changed the shape of it, made it flatter or fatter or skinnier or taller, you would immediately be able to tell. It's a big, that's the biggest thing. Yep. Hour and a half. Awesome. You guys have been super fun. Oh, I just saw Fat Philosopher is here. I guess he was been here the whole time. Been here. Yeah. Um, thanks, everybody. This is super fun. And uh, our new thing works. Yeah, I don't... I mean, I, obviously, a couple things look different to them. From my perspective, I love that the sound effects are built in. I love that little thumbs up go across the screen when somebody thumbs up the video so I can see that this video has 56 likes. Um, which is really cool. Yeah, please hit that if you have not hit that yet, um, if you like guitar stuff. Because I've been telling everybody, it really helps us I out. I can't see how many is watching from this view. Though. Yeah, 70-something. So um, what's really cool is I'm hoping that next time we're going to be able to have a multiple camera angles. Mm. And what's going to, I think the way this is going to work, just little B BTS here. What does that mean? Behind the scenes. Oh. The, what I think is really going to happen is you are going to control all of this. Like, I'm not going to do anything on the computer because mm -hmm. it's going to be facing you. And then we're going to have a couple of different camera angles, like a proper podcast. Like, I think it's going to be awesome. Awesome. Yeah, man. Thanks for hanging out, everybody. We got a video coming out tomorrow at noon. Uh, we got another video coming out on Monday. We toured um, Runway Audio which is the best cable company in the world, in my opinion, right now. Um, there's a link to it. There's a link to their cables in the description below. They are not sponsoring this video, but if you use Dylan Talks Tone in their, you, there's a link, use Dylan Talks Tone in their coupon code thing, and you get 10% off a guitar cable. This stuff's really good. There's a full video coming out about it on Monday. Uh, we got some SG stuff, P90 stuff, an AB test, doing an AB test on that guitar next week, probably, or the week after, I think. I saw two thumbs down, and then I saw one thumbs down go away and a thumbs up, so maybe somebody had hit the wrong button. Well, and thumbs down Frank <laughs> probably is here, because thumbs down Frank is always He wasn't here. there, though. I've never seen oh. a thumb, so it also shows me thumbs down. Oh, so it does. Somebody here is the thumbs down guy. Thumbs, somebody's thumbs down guy. Who is it? I don't know, but if you watch the whole video, thank you for being here. Yes, I appreciate that, and I guess we will see you uh, tomorrow when we do our next video. Thanks, y'all. We'll see ya.